Welcome to Ask Maureen, where we cover historical image analysis, genealogy, and how to work with your family photo collection. I'm Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, and I'll try to answer your questions. (laughs) So I hope you're all bearing with me because my usual live platform Uh, Somehow the camera wasn't working. So let me repeat. (laughs) This is Maureen. I am Maureen Taylor. And this is the March 2018 Facebook Live, The Photo Detective. And if you do not watch it, you can watch it on Facebook Live. You can watch it on Facebook later. And if you don't want to watch it, you can listen to it (laughs) successive on If you don't want to listen to it on Facebook, you can listen to it on the podcast, which is on iTunes. Now, I'm so glad that Deborah was able to join us. She had forgotten that the clocks had already changed here in the U.S. Hooray, exactly. What I was talking about, Deborah, was the question that you asked me, if I could please talk about finding family photos. And I went on and on and on, and no one could hear me or see me. <laughs> so we're going to start this all over. When you want to find family photos, there are lots of places to look. And so I like to keep a spreadsheet of sorts, a checklist. I'm a big checklist person. And I take a person and I know everything about their life. So I know where they work and where they lived and other people they associated with, perhaps other relatives and their activities that they like to do. And so I make a list and start looking. Does that organization have photographs? Does that historical society have photographs? Does... um Do other family members have images of that person? And there is this thing that I participate in called the orphan, that I call the orphan photo movement of which Dead Fred is part of. And there's some other Facebook friends that participate as well. And what I started to say was that I, while I have, I'm a former librarian, so I have this collecting policy here in my photo collection. There are only certain things that I purchase when I go out looking for pictures. Otherwise, I'd have to get a second house just for all the photos that I like. But this past weekend, I went antiquing. I I felt the need for more pictures. Why? I'm not really sure. You know how that goes with shopping. I'm not really a shoe person, but I am a picture person. And they're small. They don't take up a whole lot of room. So I went antiquing, and there sitting in the bin were two photographs that I have not started researching yet, and Yvonne had heard me do this, say this earlier perhaps, that they are school photographs taken at the same, but by what I think is the same photographer. And when I flip them over, the names of all the children in the school photograph were listed. And to me, that's like an unbelievable find. To, to find two photographs of with 20 something kids in each image and to flip it over and see all of their names. So what I try to do with that is send them back to where they belong. So if there's a historical society, if I can figure out from the census records, perhaps where all these kids lived and where they might have gone to school and as a historical society, I'll just gift it back to the historical society. It wasn't very expensive and I'd rather have that piece of history saved. Can you tell I used to work for a historical society? I used to love getting pictures. But if you're looking for family photos, antiquing and doing random searches online may not bring you the success you need. However, the genealogy databases that we have today, we have Ancestry.com for which if you missed that broadcast, you can see that where I had Juliana Zooks on and we talked about search techniques. And then there's My Heritage, and I had Daniel Horowitz on a few months ago, and we talked about the photo discoveries through My Heritage, which are very cool because if somebody puts photographs up and you are online and have a tree, and it's a sort of passive way. They will ping you and let you know that there are pictures of this person and you can share them on your tree. But you should watch that video as well. 
And then there's my, uh, my family search. And the amazing thing about family search is people are putting up photographs all the time and building their family trees. But at the last, at Roots Tech, just a couple of weeks ago, there was a woman who came up to my booth and she was like unbelievably excited. And I did a little Facebook Live with her because Family Search has this little app called We're Related. And if you can link up your trees, putting all your trees information on Family Search, and then you use We're Related. So this woman was at Roots Tech where there's about 40,000 people. I mean, it's, it's a crush. Uh, and it's, I, I, I like crowds, so it's, it's good for me. And someone on the We're Related app saw that she was at the conference and that she was related to this particular branch of the family where this woman had pictures that she didn't want. And she, she tracked this woman down and gave her a collection of family photographs that she no longer wanted, but that she knew this woman who just happened to work in the family search booth would love to have. Now that's, that's just beautiful. That's a beautiful moment. And uh, Michelle, I can actually see your comments on this sort of old school Facebook live through Facebook that your mom doesn't really like it when you collect photos and that she's worried those will end up mixed up with our family photos. And, you know, I kind of worry about that too. So I had an intern for a while scanning all my photographs and a couple of my family photographs sort of disappeared and I found them in my larger family collection, the non-family collection, my research collection. And so I, I pulled them out and renumbered them. It's really important to make it clear to family where the family boundaries are when you start doing this orphan photo stuff. So they don't think that some random guy you picked up in an antique shop or flea market or tag sale is actually your great, great, great uncle, um, which can certainly happen. So Deborah, that's some of the things you can do. You can also go on these family trees and then find people who have photographs that you might not have. So that photographs come down in families in a sort of non-linear way. It's not necessarily from oldest to oldest child. It's oldest to middle and whoever has the interest. And sometimes it's not even within the same family group. Sometimes it's within uh, a big, broader collateral link where some cousin, some distant cousin is really good friends with somebody else in the family and they want the pictures and the pictures get sent over there. It, you just never know where pictures are going to pop up and end up. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was certainly you can start big and you can search on images.google.com for pictures. And you used to be able to click right on the picture and blow it up on your screen. And they have changed things and because people weren't doing the right thing and they were clicking on those images and saving them and not giving the proper credit to the museum or historical society that actually owned the picture. So now you have to click on the link and go and look at the picture. It's just a little more time consuming, but that's fine. It, you know, these libraries and archives spend a lot of time and money organizing their collections and they should get attribution for having it in their collection. Not only that, but it's like a citing of your source and that historical society or museum might actually have more information associated with the person or the photo. And so it's definitely worth going back to the original source. As we know, as family historians, again, information ends up in unusual places and you have to follow the trail to see what you can find. One of the other things I wanted to talk about was a website called History Pin, which is one of my favorites. Now, History Pin started out in the UK and it is a worldwide phenomenon right now. So if you go on historypin.com, it basically connects history and location. So on History Pin, it's historypin.com, and I'll put all of these links in my Facebook on beneath this post once we're not live anymore. You can search location and see what's available. So there might be photographs from your ancestor's hometown, and there he is, or she is, on the porch of their house, and somebody has shared it. 
and shared a story about it. And you can search for locations all over the world and it works with Google Maps. So you do, and you can post photographs as well. So if you have photographs of locations from a particular place and you do need to know exactly where that place is in order to post, you can then tell the story and post it up there and share it with the world, which is kind of cool. So I like History Pinned for location type pictures. Archive.org, the internet archive, is something that I use pretty much every week. And they have a partnership with Flickr.com. So Flickr is F-L-I-C-K-R.com. And this what this means is that all the images, or a lot of the images, because they haven't finished the project yet, I don't believe, the images that are in the books on Internet Archive or archive.org are now available on Flickr, and you can search the Internet Archive collection. And one time I was giving a presentation for the Legacy Family Tree webinars on the Internet Archive, and someone in the audience said, oh, there's a picture of my great-great-grandfather. So it it, that you can make odd associations, but the beautiful thing about this collection on Flickr that this collaboration with the Internet Archive is, if you find a picture in there, in the description below the picture, you can find a link to go to the exact page where that picture appeared. And then you can search for other information within that book. It actually works pretty well. Does anybody have any questions for me thus far? On, on History Pin or the Internet Archive or using images.google.com or the orphan photo thing. Okay, then I'm going to continue. I hope that you're on my newsletter list and have watched my little video called Stories Outside the Frame, which I'm seeing as a series that I'm going to start doing on Vimeo and YouTube about photographs and the clues that are in the picture and where they lead outside the frame of the photograph. And the example I use for that video is a photograph of my, uh, my grandmother is a teenager standing in the back row and she's standing next to two of her siblings and her parents are in the front, in the center. And my mom had told me about the photo, so I knew who everyone was and even the niece and nephew were in that picture. And so I knew them as well. But then I was starting to fill in some family history blanks. I've been working with a cousin that just reached out to me uh, that we didn't actually know existed. And so this is great because now I have a, a research partner and it's a, it's a lot of fun. Now I know what you're all talking about when you talk about all these cousins that you work on family history with. And I looked at the photograph and I counted up everyone. And then I looked at the 1900 census. And in the 1900 census, there's this beautiful column that says how many children a woman had and how many were still living. And in the 19, it was 1900, 1910 census, it was the 1910 census I was looking at, 1900 and 1910. And I noticed that my grandmother was only standing with two other siblings and that my great grandmother had had seven children. And it gave me pause. And I unraveled this whole story that was actually quite sad. And I'm still working on it because some of the family details just don't add quite up. Um, there, one of the siblings supposedly died in the 1918 flu epidemic. But I found him in the 1921 Canadian census still living. So I'm really not sure what the story behind all that is. So I'm still tracking all that down. So I hope that you will watch that video called Stories Outside the Frame, which is my investigation into one of my family photos. And I'm going to do more of them for sure, because I love the way the documents either uh, support or don't support the information that's in the in the photo itself. Now, any questions about this so far? I do know somebody asked me, what is the best way to write on the back of the photos with a ballpoint pen or a pencil? And 
actually what I recommend is that you use a soft lead pencil, a six or eight B, not an H, a B. And you can buy these at an art supply store. Uh, I, I get them at the local art supply store. They're not very expensive. And I actually have little kits that I'm selling. And if you have, so her heritage photos, which are the paper-based images, you need the six or eight B for the 1960s um, resin coated images. They have like a plastic on them. The pencils don't work. So you really need to use something called a zig marker. And I buy those on Amazon. I buy them by the dozen and they're, they're, again, not very expensive if you buy them that way. They can be 4 or $5 if you buy them individually, but somehow buying them by the dozen cuts the price by a lot. Uh, Deborah actually went on my Facebook page and saw the photo that I was talking about just, re just a minute ago about stories outside the frame and noticed they were wearing dark clothes and wondered if it was a morning picture. And Deborah, I do believe that they are in mourning, and they are in mourning for one of the children just recently died. Somebody's asking me about photo sleeves, do I recommend? Oh, you stopped by my booth in Roots Tech, Yvonne. That's great. So what kinds of sleeves do I recommend? You should use polyester sleeves. They're non-PVC polyester sleeves, and I buy them either at... Michael's, if you're here in the U.S. and you have a Michael's, they're in the gift wrap aisle, which is kind of odd, but they are there in the Celebration Series. Uh, the Container Store has the right sleeves, and of course, you can get sleeves on our big online store, which is Amazon.com, although I am trying very hard to cut my Amazon habit. At Ruth's Tech, the, an amazing thing happened that made me start thinking about how many more people are related to individuals in my Last Muster series. So if you're not familiar with the Last Muster, it's a, a project I started 15 years ago now. It, it just, the years just keep piling up and the photos do as well. It's images of individuals who lived during the American Revolution, not the Civil War, the American Revolution. And they lived into the age of photography, which means they lived after 1839, 1840. And I have two volumes. And a woman stopped by my booth at Roots Tech, and she was... Uh, we had a little game going on where you scanned a QR code and you answered a couple of questions. And one of them was related to the last muster. And so she came over to the table and she looked at the last muster books. And then she looked at me and she said, oh, I wonder if my Revolutionary War ancestor is in here. And guess what? She was. And this is the first time that she had ever seen a picture of her Revolutionary War era ancestor. And it was amazing to think about the, how the history and that image really connected the past and the present. And so I want to hear from you. If you are related to one of the people in my last muster book, I'd love to hear from you. I want you to tell me which ancestor or multiple ancestors, because as we know as New Englanders, uh, we have multiple descendants um, I went to a an event once where people asked how many people were related to uh, the witches from Salem, and they listed off everybody, and they would list, and people would stand up, and they'd list somebody else, and they would stand up. And there were some people that were standing up just about every single time. And so I would like to know how many of you have last muster ancestors that are featured, the pictures are featured in my book. And I am starting to work on volume three. I've been accumulating images and I'm getting ready to start. And there may be some other big news in the future. So stay posted on the last muster. At Roots Tech, I was also able to look at new products. And that's one of the best things about going to Roots Tech is that everyone is there. All the new companies that have new cool apps or technology are there and you can play with it and you, and all the big companies come out with new things and of course they have the DNA kit sales of which 
I have too many of those. I need more ants. I need more descendants to, to test. Um, and I'm looking for that. But one of my favorite products is actually something that I had seen at FGS last year. And it's called Memory Web, and it is a photo organizer for the iPhone. And I've spoken about it before, but I continue to really love it. It syncs with so many things. Family Search, Dropbox, the iCloud. I, I can't even list them all. There's such a long list of things that it automatically syncs with. So you can back up the the photos on your phone and then you can put photos from other things on your phone and then it does some facial recognition things it's popping up and telling me who people are I, I absolutely love it so next month on my Facebook live in April I will have uh, Christopher Desmond of memory web as my guest and we're going to talk about photo organizers and one of the things that he's quite passionate about is metadata and how it transfers or doesn't transfer with your digital images from site to site. And so I'm hoping that he'll talk about that as well. I want to thank you for joining me for this Facebook Live. Even though we got off to a rough start, you stuck with me and I appreciate it and you asked some great questions. So remember, send me your questions because I love to feature them on these Facebook Lives. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you for watching and listening. You can submit your questions for future episodes using the Ask Maureen button on MaureenTaylor.com or through any of my social media contacts. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as The Photo Detective and on Facebook at Maureen Photo Detective. I hope you'll come back for the next show. Don't forget to send me your questions. <laughs>